our scripture reading today is from Jeremiah chapter 10. It starts with the first verse and it goes like this. Listen to the word that the Lord has spoken to you, people of Israel. The Lord proclaims, don't follow the ways of the nations or be troubled by signs in the sky, even though the nations are troubled by them. The rituals of the nations are hollow. A tree from the forest is chopped down and shaped by the craftsman's tools. It is overlaid with silver and gold and fastened securely with hammer and nails so it won't fall over. They are no different than a scarecrow in a cucumber patch. They can't speak. They must be carried because they can't walk. Don't be afraid of them because they can't do harm or good. Lord, no one is like you. You are great and great is your mighty name. Who wouldn't fear you, king of the nations? That is your due. I was, but I can Among it. all the wise of the nations and in all their countries, <laughs> okay, there is no one like you. <laughs> but they are both foolish and silly. They offer nothing because they are nothing more than wood. Covered with silver from Tarshish and gold from Ephaz, they are the work of a craftsman in the hands of a goldsmith. Clothed in blue and purple, all of them nothing more than the work of artisans. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. When he is angry, the earthquakes, the nations can't endure his rage. Tell them this, the gods who didn't make the heaven and the earth will perish from the earth and from under the heavens. Now this prophecy in Jeremiah, in chapter 10 of Jeremiah, it's um, familiar to us because it's an echo of other prophecies we hear in the Bible. If you go to Isaiah in chapter 44, it's almost exactly the same prophecy. And Ezekiel's words are the same in his prophecy. It says, basically, why do you put your trust in things that are gonna let you down? These things are hollow. They don't have meaning. They can't really impact your life in any way. They don't care about you in any way. They are made of wood and stone. Why do you put your trust in them? Jeremiah says that you should put your trust in the God who lives, the God who walks on the earth, who breathes the air that we breathe, who cares about us as people about who we are. So why do you put your faith in these things which can't return it? These idols which caught your attention, but in the end, they don't bring any value to your life. They have no impact on your life. They don't see you or hear you. I think it's easy sometimes to dismiss adult idols as sort of a thing that God doesn't like because it distracts our attention from God, right? Like, God doesn't like when we watch football as an, because it's an idol and it takes us away from God. And I think that's the wrong way around, really. God's issue with idolatry is not necessarily that we don't give God the due a living God deserves. God's problem with idolatry is that we don't give ourselves what we deserve. That we take our attention away from the God who can give us so many blessings, the God who cares about us, who's invested in our lives, who made us and claimed us and named us, and we turn our attention to things that are so much less. There are things we love that, we, that matter to us, that we care about, those are valuable. But in the end, they don't care about us right? The idols don't care about who we are in the same way that the living God does. So the problem with idolatry is not that God is jealous or that God is worried about idols impacting God's power. The problem is that with idolatry is the way it makes us less than who we are called to be.